which should you replace, your camera or your lens? Obviously, you're having trouble with your images. The results are not what you're expecting and you think it's time for an upgrade. So which do you buy, a new lens or a new camera? I'm gonna answer that question in this video, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography and Photographer's Freedom, giving you the time, gear and skills to be the best photographer you can be. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for coming around today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit subscribe and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. So should you buy a new camera or a new lens? That is the question, right, that we want to answer here. Well, let me ask you a question. When the windows on your house get dirty and you're having trouble seeing out, what do you do? Do you buy a new house and just move out? Or do you clean the windows? Of course, you clean the windows. Your lens is your camera's window to the outside world. So it makes no sense whatsoever to replace the whole house when it could be the window that's the problem. So if you walked up to me in the street and said, Barry, should I replace my camera or my lens? Nine times out of 10, I'm going to tell you to replace the lens. There are circumstances where you might want to buy a new camera body and we'll talk about that in a minute. But what I'm gonna do in this video is talk to you about this magical lens that I have on here and how it has completely transformed my photos and I, had, I did not change my camera body. I was extremely frustrated with this camera body in the past. I was thinking, mm, should I buy a new camera? But I got this lens on the front of it and I have proved to myself that you should change your lens before you change your camera body. So this lens that I have on my camera here is an AFS Nikkor 70 to 300 millimeter F 4.5 to 5.6 ED VR lens. And it is absolutely fantastic. Prior to this, I was using a kit lens, the 55 to 200 millimeter kit lens that comes that came with my camera. And I've used more than one of these lenses because the first one failed me, the focus motor in it went, and this one was starting to get really soft at the edges. The, the focal plane was slowly disappearing into the center of the frame, and the outsides were just getting so blurry and so yuck that I just couldn't use the images. These are a great lens. They're a really great lens to start out with. I have taken a lot of photos with this in the past that have been really good, as you can see here on the screen. And I've made a lot of money with these photos, but these lenses are not built to last. And, you know, if you're moving past the beginner stage or even past the intermediate photographer stage, these just aren't going to do it. So what I did in between the 55 to 200 millimeter and this one was I bought a Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter lens. It was an F4 5, F4 to 5.6. It didn't have VR on it. I thought I was buying the VR version, but it, I didn't. It was it didn't have VR, and that was my mistake. I didn't read the description <laughs> properly. I only paid about $300 for it, and look, it took a decent photo. It really did. It didn't focus really fast in most situations, uh, especially not bird photography. I'm a bird photographer mostly at the moment and it just didn't cut it. Uh, but I wanted to save a few bucks. I thought I'll just save a few dollars now and I'll buy the lens I actually want, which is worth, you know, over the over the $1,800 mark. I'll buy that later. And, you know, the Tamron did its job, but I thought, no, look, it, it had really, the chromatic aberration was really bad. And it also just had a magenta hue across the entire frame. And I've noticed this with my other Tamron lens as well. It's not a great issue because you can remove it in Photoshop or Lightroom quite easily. So it's not a big deal, but it was very frustrating. It was taking up a little bit of extra time in post-processing. So I thought, well, what's the point of sitting at my computer longer when I can be out taking photos with a decent lens? So what I did was I went to one specific website to look for a lens review. Now, I was going to put links, affiliate links into the description of this video to lenses that you could buy and earn some affiliate money. But I thought, you know what, why not just help somebody else out? 
and the website that I went to was kenrockwell.com. Before I went out and bought this lens, I actually got this one second hand. Before I went and bought it, I went to kenrockwell.com and read his review of this lens. His website is loaded with amazing reviews of lenses and camera bodies of all brands and they are just amazing. And his review of this lens was spot on. It has been the most incredibly sharp fast focusing amazing lens i've ever had and it's going to stay on my camera body for a very long time so check out kenrockwell.com before you buy anything there's a link in the video description below where that'll take you straight to that website please make sure that you find out what lenses are compatible with your camera body as well before you do that and you can do that by just googling your camera body and compatible lenses so for example nikon d5200 compatible lenses and you'll find information on which lenses are compatible. So I promise to show you how much this lens has improved my photos. So let's go down to my office and we'll have a look at some comparisons. Let's go. So we're gonna have a look at a few comparison images here of the different lenses that, I'm gonna look firstly at the Tamron, 70 to 300 millimeter, and I'm using, um, View NXI, which is the viewing software that comes with your Nikon camera. Now you'll see, I don't know if you can see this straight away, but with the Tamron 70 to 300 f4 to 5.6G, instantly you can see a magenta-ish kind of a shade. Like these seagull images, you can see there, it's the colors are just not right. Now, if I go in and uh, you'll probably see it better at that zoom level but if i zoom right in we'll go into one to one or 100 percent see along this line this ridge of his wing here this purplish shade there and you can see it along the beak as well and up in here it's everywhere and it's just the colors that are produced by this lens just aren't natural so it is easily removable in lightroom though and i will show you the after effects we'll go across to lightroom we've got the same image here now this one has had, as you can see, whoops, sorry about that. As you can see over here, this one actually has had remove chromatic, remove chromatic aberration applied there, but it still doesn't do 100% of the job. And uh, I actually, if I go back out of there for a second, I did actually do uh, some lens correction things there a minute ago. So I'll just undo those because I did some defringing over here, as you can see. So I'll just undo it. So that's as it came in from the camera. So that's as it was imported from the original folder that from the camera. So if you turn on the chromatic, if I turn off the chromatic aberration for starters, you can see how much stronger it is. So I'll put the chromatic aberration back on, but you can also use the manual setting here, which is awesome. Grab this fringe color selector eyedropper. And if I go in here and I find that magenta is shade, probably best on his beak here, we'll go about there on that pixel and click instantly gone. It still hasn't really removed much of this up here, but it's a lot better lot better if I go before and after you see so it wasn't a big hassle to remove but still a bit more editing that you have to do after the fact so now in Lightroom I have two images here one of them was taken with the 55 to 200 millimeter kit lens as you can see and the other one was taken with the uh, 70 to 300 Nikon which is f4 5 to 5 6 uh, I don't know if you can see already, but the, the difference in quality of photo is amazing. Um, these are similar images, not the same, but uh, if I zoom in to 100%, you can see the center of this image is pretty much in focus, right? It's not sharp, but super sharp, but it's pretty good. But if I just scan across to the right, which should be in the focal plane, all this stuff here should be in the focal plane as well, because the front of this rock is about level with 
where these waves are, but as you can see, the further to the right we go, the blurrier it gets. So this is what was happening to the 55 to 200 towards the end of its life there. It was, and on the left side of frame as well, it's just horrible. The only part of this image that is in focus, in fact, is that very center bit there. So it was really quite terrible. And if we look at the 70 to 300, you can see a little bit soft at the edge there on the left. Super, super sharp in the middle. I love the way it captures water. Look at this water, beautiful. And if I keep scanning across, it's still in focus all the way to the edge. So that was one of the main things that I was looking for in my lens upgrade and I got it and I'm extremely happy. So now I've got a couple of photos side by side here of a sooty oyster catcher. I love these little birds. I'm getting a lot of photos of these guys with this new 70 to 300 mil lens. Uh, you can see these two photos were shot in similar lighting conditions. So it's a sunny day. Uh, it's sort of shot from a similar angle, from a similar distance away from the bird. Uh, I'm not sure about the focal lengths here. This one was shot at 200 millimeter and this one 240 so pretty similar and i'm going to put them side by side so that you can see the difference in sharpness i'll just switch them over so we have the 55 to 200 mil lens on the left and the 70 to 300 on the right so i'll zoom in to both birds and you will instantly see uh sorry you will instantly see the difference in sharpness. Look at that. So neither of these images are edited yet, but the sharpness difference is just, it's <laughs> awesome, right? This, guys, is what difference a new lens can make. Change your lens first. Now, earlier I said that there might be some circumstances where you may want to change your camera body. Now, what I'm talking about there is limitations on what you can do with the camera body that you have. For example, with the Nikon D5200, I can't do high speed sync with a flash, which means I can't use a shutter speed greater than 1 200th of a second when I'm using a, an external flash on this camera, which is kind of limiting for times when you might want to use a flash for bird photography, for example. Um, even trying to take a photo of a bird that's sitting on a branch in amongst a thicket or you know under the canopy of a rainforest or whatever where there's not, a mu not much light, only being able to use one two hundredth of a second is really limiting. So that is kind of a drawback with this camera and it would be one of the reasons why I'd want to upgrade my camera body. Another reason could be the fact that your camera body doesn't have Wi-Fi, if that's a big issue for you. For me, the D5200 doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It's not a big deal for me, I don't mind. You can buy Wi-Fi dongles for these if you want to, but I have no issues. I'm an old school kind of guy and I don't mind plugging a USB in or a lead and just transferring it to the computer that way. It's no big deal. So those are a couple of circumstances where you might want to change your camera body. But first up, if image quality is the problem, change your lens first. So should you replace your camera body or your lens, lens hands down. Try the lens first. Don't replace the house if the windows are dirty. Okay, so if you have not clicked or touched that subscribe button yet, please do so and ding that notification bell so you get notified about future videos that I release. Also down in the video description is the KenRockwell.com link. Please check that out. The man does amazing camera reviews, lens reviews. You won't be disappointed. And there's a link down there as well to sign up to my mailing list where you can receive updates, special deals, photography advice, loads of other stuff. So get into that. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography and Photographer's Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots, and I'll see you soon.